weight like everybody else, pal. All right guys, let's go ahead and check out the space real quick. So this is the space that we're talking about. If you guys remember, I did a uh, video shoot of this area um, way back in, I think it was December, to be honest. It could be actually November. Um, but this is a 14 by 18 room. The ceiling's kind of sloped up at the top there. And uh, I guess from right to the ground to the this little ledge, I would expect that to be nine feet. And then this looks like it's, you know, another foot and a half, maybe two feet, so 11 feet right there. But uh, the space is pretty coming together pretty nicely. Cameron and, uh, over at Insane AV has been here roughly an hour. He knew the dimensions of this, so a lot of the, 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 rough, the rough cuts were done before the job, so it makes it a lot easier whenever they come out. And again, you're paying for you know their experience whenever they come out and do these jobs. It's not necessarily how long it takes, but, uh, but that, 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 that's coming together very nicely. Let me show you guys the, uh, let's go ahead and show you guys the gear over here. So we're starting out with a uh, Marantz 8012. The customer already had an 8012 that he bought uh, previously, and then he wanted to incorporate it into a system. So again, guys, you don't have to buy everything from us. We would appreciate if you did, but if you guys have gear that you need to repurpose, we're happy to, to help out, try to fit it into your system. So what we have here, uh, Marantz 8012, 13 channel processor right there, and this is a 7.2 correction, that is 11 channel process, or 11 channel ABR. This is a 7.2.4 uh, Dolby Atmos Focal 300 series system. So we're using the Focal 300 series in-wall sixes LCRs up front with the Flax drivers. Man, it's so cool. And then we have for the walls, we have the IW sixes. And then for the ceilings, we have the IC eights. So we're using um, SB3000s for the subwoofers. We're using two of those in the room. We have a couple different ter uh, termination points. We have one back there in the corner, and then we have another one right up here up front. So that's gonna help out with that. Let's see, what else? So the customer decided to go with Wattbox to protect everything. So we have both of those for the subs, and then we have one for the projector. So the projector's right here, JVC RS3000. You guys know I love the JVC RS, correction. RS2000. <laughs> you guys know I love the JVC projectors. These things just perform, and you, to be honest, you really can't go wrong with, with any of those, especially with the, 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 the theater optimizer feature that they have in there right now. The customer decided to go with the 140 inch AT screen. So basically these speakers that I was just talking about are going behind the, the screen. So this is built out to help, um, to help optimize that to, to even happen because you wouldn't necessarily need all this, but right here, there is, this is an exterior wall. It's like a quadruple stud, and there's no way that we could have notched that to, to put the speaker in there right up front to have it left and right. So what we're doing is we're building this box, bringing the screen out so that you have a little bit of room and also a little bit of wiggle room for the actual speaker so that it doesn't interfere with the screen itself and jiggle the screen whenever, you know, the voice happens or the explosion happens up front. So that's the reason for this back box. Usually it's not necessary, but in this particular scenario, that's what we had to work with. So this is a 140 inch Slate 1.2 Zero Edge Pro screen, and it's gonna be right over here. And this was basically used, we, we could have gone bigger based on the throw distance that the customer had, but we decided to go smaller based on uh, you know budget constraints as well as you know the limitations of a 2000. You know you, you can get a great big screen, but you want you you might not have the best experience possible. So we erred on the side of um, erred on the side of caution. Basically, got a 140 inch AT screen because you do lose a little bit of light whenever you do the AT as well. So I think that is roughly it. Showed you guys all the gear, but we have these things in the space. The guys are here rocking and rolling. I'm taking up a little bit too much time because now they're on a break to, uh, <laughs> to complete this job. So I will continue to update you guys as we finish it up. Thanks for watching.
So with these 300 series, you just kick out these dog legs. They're spring loaded. And this is the cool part. It's just so easy. You put it into the wall and it just snaps. So you don't, you don't even need any tools to snap these things in there. Do over. See, it's just that easy. Hang on a second. Okay, go ahead. Uh, pull the ammo, try one more time. Okay, let go. Yeah, buddy. You got it? Got a little back and forth. Oh, cool. So we got a little extra over here, too. Oh, yeah. No, that's fine. All right. And that's how you do it. That's why I like watching Cameron work. Whenever it takes two screws, he puts in four screws just to make sure that that sucker ain't coming down. I mean, uh, it's just that added a little extra of security that I, I just really like the way Cameron does, does work over here. Add in Insane AV, one of Dream Media's preferred installers out here in the Houston market. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Check out going the extra mile. He had a little extra paint on his brush from yesterday that he kept in his Ziploc baggie. And now he's making it to where, you know, the plates are different sizes. Obviously, if you're looking at an electrical plate and then a pass-through plate, they're different sizes. So you will have a little bit of touch-up work to do if you decide to change them up. So we're going to be touching up a little bit of paint here, finishing up this projector install. I have to get up on the top. You got it? You got it. All right, now give this top part a push. I can't. Give me, give me okay. Yeah. All core right there. <laughs> All right, give that top part a push. There you go. I gotta get reset. There we go. All right, perfect. Yeah. What? It's good. Okay. We're live. So usually what I like to do is I like to get it to where it'll just naturally hang so there isn't really any angle to the dangle. And then you put the set screws in there. Here's the four set screws in your Allen key. Busting out the cell phone. So we got the projector up there mounted and then I went ahead and just taped it real quick, you know, just to finish it out real nice. We have an, an accessory ethernet cable ran up here. All the set screws are in. If you guys don't know what the set screws in, you'll see them front and center right there. So you have four of these on the unit itself just to keep it protected from falling down. Got the Vega HDMI cable right back here. And I went ahead and taped, oh, if I don't fall down, I went ahead and taped his screws or his, uh, his Allen keys that he's gonna need for the mount as well as the set screws right here, right up to the top. So the customer won't ever, won't ever uh, lose them. But this is the view of the room as it stands right now. Man, I'm a little out of breath after lifting, lifting this projector. But uh, we have these in-ceiling speakers to do left. The front's already tapped and ready to go. Now we gotta build uh, the screen and put the speakers in and then uh, it's time to make some noise. So let's keep updating you as we finish it up. All right, so let's check this out. We are getting the in-ceiling front Atmos speaker put in there. And this is a 300 series from Focal. So basically what you do is you line up the red lines right there where it says lock, and then you turn it clockwise. And then it's done. So it's nice and easy like that. 
That is the 300. It's easy for the guy standing at the bottom of the ladder. Hey, take it easy. So <laughs> <laughs> we just installed this one right here. This one's already done as well as this one right back here. So we have all the speakers in. The speakers are ready to go. Full 7.2.4. Focal 300 series. These are the ones with the flax, uh, flax um, drivers on them. Just check them out. Looks super cool. So pro tip, if you guys didn't know how they get this little uh, kind of pattern in them, they use linen as the last little uh, step. So that's what gives them that little shape, that cross hatch. But box is in. We're going to unbox the um, AVR. I'll get working on that one. We'll get these lines toned out and then we'll finish off with the last subwoofer and then now we're on to the screen so the screen has to be built 140 inch 140 inch screen innovations um, acoustically transparent slate screen so let's uh let's keep working all right so what's included in a 140 inch zero edge pro box is you have your zero edge pro frame and then you have the borders as well as your box of hardware and then standing up back there in the back is going to be your screen and your black um, backing for the projector itself. So your very first step is going to put out, set out the frame. So you're gonna set out the side, side pieces as well as the top and bottom. Since this one doesn't have the back LED kit on it, I don't think that it matters which one's top or bottom. <laughs> you're gonna to wanna to fix the sides all together. And that's what we were talking about right here with these brackets. So again, the brackets matter. We'll show you all that in just a little bit, but uh, there's, this isn't really easy to film, so I'll probably just pop back in with some updates after it's done. Give me a second. What's up? Two snaps in a circle. Remember that, living color? Yeah. Oh yeah. Two, two snaps in a Z formation. <laughs> a circle and back snap. Well, I think we are just about wrapping up here. There's just a few extra things to do. We're gonna finish off the uh, full-on calibration of the system. You guys know that whenever I come out to a space, I like to put my personal touch on it. So I have my DB meter here. I'm basically gonna verify what Odyssey did, go through the calibration, make sure that all the crossovers are done right. All the speakers are set to small versus you know set to large like it usually likes to put them. It doesn't really matter how physically big your, your speakers are. You really shouldn't put them on large um, unless you know, you're, you're, you're really gonna have some some full range speakers and you're not really worried about having a sub it kind of just messes everything up but uh yeah the room's done here it looks like we have the 140 inch um zero edge pro slate 1.2 gain acoustically transparent screen let's show you the real quick up close of that right so you can see here and this is artifact i mean even the wife whenever i showed her a picture of the room she's like hey why does it look like it has waves and stuff in it <laughs> the screen doesn't have waves in it it's just the way these little uh, sconces kind of project light onto the screen itself so that's that's basically what what, what that is but the zero edge pro the customer wanted to install their own uh, set of led lights behind there so that's coming later on i think that's going to look really really cool especially since we uh, built out this custom box back here from the wall. And again, the reason why we did that, I've probably explained it three or four times already throughout this video, is just that for this particular room right here, this is an exterior wall, right up and down 
uh, there they had a quadruple stud, so they had two by four stacked, stacked, stacked. And to put a speaker in there, it just wouldn't work. So um, you, you really couldn't cut the drywall. It'd be cocked to the side one way or the other, and it wouldn't give you a realistic experience. So that's the reason why you know we went the, went the extra mile to do this and build out the box itself. So the room is, uh, design-wise, it was painted. So we have a nice um, black here, flat black from Sherwin-Williams. It runs all the way up the column, as you see right here. And then the rest of the room, uh, besides the ceiling, because the ceiling is the same color as the black in front, is going to be kind of like a, a bronze type of color. What'd you say it was? Urbane. Urbane bronze is what it's called. So we have the Focal 300 series throughout, LCR in behind the screen. Over here, we have the Focal 300s again. Those are the in-wall sixes. Cameron's over here just doing a quick little touch-up of paint, going the extra mile for you guys. And then we have the in-wall uh, sixes in the back. So, I mean, again, on camera, the way it looks is it looks like these are a little too low. It really isn't. So don't worry about that. I mean, the, the, the way that we've, we've heard the sound in here, all the tweeters are lined up, and that's a really, really good way of doing in things as well. So we have all of those in there. Above, we have the in-wall eights so these are the focal series 300s iw8s and that's what you're going to be using for your atmos so this is a full-on 7.2.4 system the dot two is taken care of by these svs subs these are the sb3000s um, we have everything protected with um, watt box and tributary so back here we have a little tributary single gang um, outlet that we've been selling a ton of on the channel. You guys know that we like protecting all of our gear. We also have another one up here protecting the projector. The projection system is the JVC RS2000. Again, big shout out to the customer for actually allowing us to use this one in our shootout video. This one was actually used in the 715 video, the Sony 715 versus the JVC RS2000. So I think besides the HDMI cable, which is tributaries, that is going to cover out the room. Customers supply their own uh, SR8012 from uh, Marantz. So this is a full on 11 channels right out of the box um, ABR. He does, he just moved in like straight up, like he, he, he got the keys and he's like, guys, how soon can you get in there? So he just moved in. He doesn't have his, um, his, uh, entertainment stand just yet. So again, you guys have seen this several, several times on the channel, whenever we just use the box for the AVR, cause you know, we just don't want to put it on the ground. So he has that Apple TV as a source. He has an Xbox as a source as well. And then we have the last SB 3000 up front. But other than that, I think the last thing to do is to finish off the final calibration, give you guys a quick demo, but I will do a full on dedicated demo video, you know, a little bit later on. So if you guys want to check that one out, that one's going to be a little more in depth than this specific video. This was a long install, right? So <laughs> you're, you're not paying for the time that we're spending at your place. You're paying for the quality of work that's, uh, that's going into it. So this was a long install. We didn't want to end things off before, you know, we would be personally happy having this stuff in our space. So um, that's about it. I'm gonna show you guys the demo, but really appreciate you guys for watching. If you guys want any of this stuff done to your house, this is in the Houston market. We're out in Katy, Texas right now. I have my man right here. Cameron over at Insane AV, he was the lead on this install right here. He's running away from the camera. No, but, if you, <laughs> but if you guys want any of this type of work done at your place and you guys are in the Houston area, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'll leave our number right down below on the screen. And uh, if you guys would like anything home theater related, hi-fi related, two channel, home theater, whatever it is, give us a call. We'd be happy to earn your business. But I'm in on this video here. You guys can check out that demo. I'll catch you on the next one. like everybody else, pal. What the hell is that? Obstruction ahead, obstruction ahead. Damn it, all units divert down on the lower fifth. I repeat, exit down. Exit down. Lower fifth would be like turkeys on Thanksgiving now.
go for that, right? He's gonna need something a lot bigger to get through this. What is that? Was that a bazooka? Now!